In this video, we will define trigonometric functions of any angle. In one of the previous videos, we defined the six trigonometric functions using an acute angle inside of a right triangle. I will leave a link of that video in the description below. And now let's see how we can define trigonometric functions of any angle. For this, we will have the rectangular coordinate system. And here we have the x-axis and the y-axis. And this is quadrant 1, then to the left quadrant 2, then quadrant 3, and then quadrant 4. Now, in quadrant 1, we will plot a point with the coordinates x and y. Then we will draw an angle in standard position. And this means that the vertex is at the center of the rectangular coordinate system and the initial side is along the positive x-axis. So here we have the initial side and now the terminal side will pass through this point. And now we will call this angle angle theta. Now from this point we will also draw a perpendicular down to the x-axis. Then what we have formed here is a right triangle. In this triangle, the bottom side is x and the right side is y. The hypotenuse, we will call it r, and it can be found using the Pythagorean theorem. So r equals square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, because this point is in quadrant 1, both x and y are positive. But if we would plot this point in any other quadrants, then depending on the quadrant, x or y can be negative. However, r represents the distance from the origin to the point and regardless of the quadrant, r will always be positive. Now, once we have this point in quadrant 1 and the acute angle theta, we will use this right triangle to define the six trigonometric functions of this angle. We will start with sine of theta and sine of theta is the opposite side y divided by hypotenuse r. Cosine of angle theta is the adjacent side x divided by hypotenuse r. Tangent of angle theta is the opposite side y divided by the adjacent side x. Now let's also define the other three trigonometric functions. And the first one is the cosecant and cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, and if sine is y over r, then cosecant is r over y. Here we need to understand that if this point would be located on the x-axis, then the y-coordinate would be 0, and division by 0 would be undefined. Therefore, we will say that cosecant of theta is r over y if y is not equal to 0. Next, we will have the secant function, and secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and if cosine is x over r, then secant is r over x. And here, if this point would be located on the y-axis, then the x-coordinate would be 0, and then secant would be undefined. Therefore, we have to say here that x cannot be equal to 0. Now, the last trigonometric function is cotangent, and this one is the reciprocal of tangent. And if tangent is y over x, then cotangent is x over y, and y cannot be equal to 0. Also, to the left in the tangent function, x cannot be equal to 0. Now, here we have all six trigonometric functions, and they work for this acute angle as well as any angle in any of the quadrants. So let's draw an angle that is in quadrant 2. First we will plot a point with the coordinates x and y, and now we will draw the angle in standard position with the terminal side passing through this point. The angle formed here is an obtuse angle, and we will call it angle theta. Now, from this point, let's also draw a perpendicular down to the x-axis, and now we have formed a right triangle. In this triangle, the bottom side is x, and the left side is y. Now, here we have to understand that in quadrant 2, the x-coordinate is negative, and the y-coordinate is positive. So, this x is negative, and y is positive. 
The hypotenuse R is always positive because it represents the distance from the origin to this point. So, as you see here, we have a right triangle, however, this angle theta is not an angle inside the triangle, but instead is this obtuse angle that is in standard position. And now to find the trigonometric functions of this angle, we use exactly the same definitions. Sine of this angle is y over r, cosine is x over r, and tangent is y over x. Now, let's draw an angle that is in quadrant 3. First, we will plot a point in this quadrant. And in quadrant 3, both x and y are negative. And here we have the angle in standard position with the initial side on the x-axis and the terminal side passing through this point. This angle is between 180 and 270 degrees. Now, let's form the right triangle by drawing the perpendicular to the x-axis. Then here, x is negative, y is negative, and r is always positive. And now, to find the trigonometric functions of this angle, we use exactly the same definitions. And because in quadrant 3, both x and y are negative, then some of the trigonometric functions will be positive and some of them will be negative. Now, let's also see an angle that lies in quadrant 4. So, let's plot a point with the coordinates x and y. And now we will draw the angle in standard position that has the terminal side passing through this point. Then, the angle theta is an angle that is between 270 and 360 degrees. And now, let's draw the perpendicular and form a right triangle. And in quadrant 4, x is positive, y is negative, and r is always positive. And now to find the trigonometric functions of this angle, again, we use exactly the same definitions. So here we had angle theta in quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. These definitions also work when theta is on the x-axis or on the y-axis or when theta is negative. And we just have to make sure that for cosecant y cannot be 0, for secant x cannot be 0, for cotangent y cannot be 0, and for tangent x cannot be 0. Now, let's solve the following example. Draw an angle in standard position whose terminal side passes through the point negative 3, 5. Then find each of the six trigonometric functions of this angle. So we will draw the rectangular coordinate system. And now we will plot the point negative 3, 5. That is 3 units to the left and 5 units up. Then we will draw the angle in standard position. So here we have angle theta, and from the given point we will draw a perpendicular down to the x-axis. Then in this quadrant 2, x is negative 3, y is positive 5, and we will find r by using the Pythagorean theorem. r equals square root of negative 3 squared plus 5 squared. Then inside the square root, 9 plus 25 will be 34. We can also add this to the graph. x is negative 3, y is 5, and r is square root of 34. Now we need to find all six trigonometric functions. We will start with sine of theta. And by definition, sine is y over r. And we will replace y with 5 and r with square root of 34. Now, we have to rationalize the denominator and for this we will multiply the numerator and the denominator by square root of 34. Then in the numerator we will have 5 square root of 34 and in the denominator we will have 34. Now, let's find cosine of theta. Cosine of theta, by definition, is x divided by r. 
then x is negative 3 and r is square root of 34. From here we will rationalize the denominator and we will have that cosine of theta is negative 3 square root of 34 over 34. Now let's find tangent of theta. By definition this is y over x and y is 5 and x is negative 3 and we will write this as negative 5 over 3. The next function will be cosecant of theta and because this is the reciprocal of sine we will take 5 over square root of 34 and we will flip it. Then cosecant will be square root of 34 over 5. Now let's find the secant function which is the reciprocal of cosine and for this we will flip this fraction and we will have that secant of theta is negative square root of 34 over 3. And now the last one will be cotangent of theta and if we flip negative 5 over 3 we will have negative 3 over 5. And now the whole problem is completed. Here we are done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment and thank you for watching.